Welcome in, Canvas Warriors. Today, I want to talk about creating a new assignment, but I don't want to create it in just any other way. How many of you guys see this page right here? This is the create new assignment page. How many of you see this and just go, what do I do? Where do I start? I don't even know how to begin to create or design an assignment that makes it engaging for students uh, to, to get all the information that they need and to get right into it. So today I wanna show you a format that uh, we've stumbled upon that I think works really well and is super effective. So let's get into it. I've designed here, actually what I've designed here is an assignment and I've modeled the format that we use almost on everything that we create that we deliver to students. And this really comes from our, our experience using Summit Learning. And we've adapted to some of the things that they've used, but there's a couple of things that we feel are really, really strong and work really, really well. Um, and we kick off, uh, when we design an assignment, we always kick it off with an essential question and an enduring, under, enduring understanding. And, and that's kind of the, the key here to, to what we're doing. But before I jump into all the different sections that we use to create, I wanna talk about why it's so important to um, use a format um, and, and to stick to that format. First of all, it creates consistency. It creates consistency from like one assignment to the next that you deploy to students, but also if you get your whole team on board, you get your whole school on board, it creates consistency from one teacher to the next. And that consistency really allows students to understand what they're supposed to do every single time. Every single time they go into a new assignment, they have an expectation as to what they're gonna see, the, the flow of that assignment, and then where to go when, what they, you know, to understand what they need to do, okay? Now, the other question I have here um, that goes along with this, my essential question, right? How do we create a consistent assignment format that is engaging? Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you that in this, in this uh, format that I have. Um, but also, like, what kind of format still allows teachers to be unique and creative in how they um, develop their assignment, you know, uh, instructions and things like that, like how they get that to, out to students. And I feel that this format works really, really well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to kind of I'm not going to go over every little thing. Um, I just want to show you uh, the, the the basic sections here, and then um, show you a couple a couple examples, and uh, and then uh, let you let you go from there. Let you turn it over for them, and, and let that let you create on your own. So um, I'm going to scroll down here into our uh, description um, piece here, and just kind of show you uh, the the layout of the sections. I'm just going to get to the right of the heart of each of these sections. So on, on, in some of these sections, um, we don't use every time. Um, I use the essential questions and enduring understandings on every assignment, but I don't necessarily use the description on every assignment or resources or things like that. So every time I create an assignment, it kicks it off with an essential question, um, which really engages the students in terms of like kind of the big ideas you know, that you're trying to, um, you know, impart, impart to them uh, with, your, with your assignment, right? And then from there, the, the, we go to the enduring understandings. And those enduring in understandings follow up the essential questions. And a lot of times you might draw from experts on that. Um, it might be just something like you're, you want them to, to, to come away with um, at the end, you know, of the, of the project. And I try to stay away from you know, outcomes and, you know, kind of educational speak, you know, type of things with students. I think that's really important that we avoid those types of things. Um, the description, there's a description in there. Sometimes you just need to like say what it is, like what is it that students are going to do, a place for directions. I think that's really important. So that way, you know, when students get to that section, a lot of times they're like, well, what am I supposed to do with all this information that you're giving me? And it's a real quick logistics piece, like here's what you're gonna do um, style of you know instructions there, okay? Um, and then following that are, sometimes I use these, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the type of assignment or project that I'm deploying, uh, you know, and whether or not I feel that students need some resources or things like that. Um, I think resources is, is in some ways, 
uh, resources section is a catch-all. If you have a PDF that you need um, to give to students, you know, that's part of an article, um, or perhaps there's like a concept that you need um, to like, you know, for some students who might struggle with something in particular, you can deploy a type of um, resource in that way. Um, so anything that you feel is necessary for students' success that, you know, uh, isn't a regular part of the assignment. Um, and uh, it can be a, a, a wide variety of different things, uh, even video, you know, stuff like that. The next section that I think is really important um, for uh, open-ended style assignments or open-ended projects is, is like a, an example section, or I call it exemplars or tools for success. And um, in other words, like if you have an open-ended project where uh, students have a lot of agency in terms of creating a, a product or, or something like that, um, a lot of times students need to calibrate what they're supposed to do, like what type of you know level of, of project are you asking from them in terms of quality or you know quantity, whatever. Um, and and sometimes it's it's much easier to see that as an example versus like laying it out with you know rubrics and you know here's your guidelines and parameters and stuff like that that you would put in a direction section right and sometimes some kids just need to see it right they just need to see an example and then they can just hit it after that like they can see it after that and 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 really tackle their project from there it's also a great way to like brainstorm some things for students who might struggle you know like getting you know kickstarted um, on a project and then I, I always leave maybe a, a last bit of a section here for extended learning opportunities. Um, you know, sometimes you get into a concept and students really get into it and you want to give them the option for tackling something else or, you know, reading something else um, or w whatever it might be, right? Like maybe you just don't have time within your unit or within your assignment or whatever to, you know, give those to students. But for those students who are, like really engaged, really want to kind of go beyond with what you're deploying to them, um, opportunity for them to to learn a little bit more and, and make connections. So I think that's really, really important to throw in there. You're going to see that I've kind of modeled this whole assignment. This, this is a tutorial for you guys um, to, to, to follow the format. And in the in parentheses here, I've laid out like what each section is. What I really try to do is instead of labeling a section as like essential question and then putting that essential question in like a bullet point form underneath that heading, I like to throw the essential question right in the heading. So for your students who are big time skimmers, um, you know, that don't really want to take the time to kind of read through things, um, you have this great big text that's right there visually and you know pops into students heads um you know like really really quickly so and i think it's more engaging too having engaging subheadings is is i think another way to create a storytelling element to your design to your assignment design than using you know pretty boring you know subheadings like essential question like i just kind of would probably you know hit the snooze alarm there if i saw you know a bunch of subheadings that you know, for a lot of times for students, they don't care about the educational speak that, you know, that you're engaging in in terms of creating this. They want to they want to be you know, they want to be told a story. They want to be led through something. Um, and this is a great way to do that. It's a great way to engage students by, um, you know, being creative and using engaging um, subheadings. So for this purpose, I've put those in parentheses so you can see how those sections are laid out. And you'll notice that uh, it's 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 fairly linear, right? Um, you kick it off with the essential question, follow that up with an enduring understanding. And then from there, you know, pick and choose which ones you think um, fit with what you're trying to do and um, what you're trying to deliver in terms of in terms of your your assignment. Um, I've got a couple examples here for you, so I'm just going to show you exactly how I've how I've done this, right? I've got some directions here. Kick it off for yourself. Um, try it by you know like adding a, adding some image to images to make it visually appealing. I use these icons here, and I've I've created these icons in our template for you um, to use for each of your subheadings. The icons create a uh, a visual element that you can use consistently. 
And so students can look for that, you know, on a regular basis. They know if you use those images consistently and they see those visual cues, they know exactly where to go in your assignment to reference that section. Like, you know, say you, you talk about what you guys are going to do and then, you know, the student gets into the assignment and then he or she's like, oh man, what, what is exactly that my teacher wanted me to do or where, what resources do I need to help me? And they can jump back into your um, layout here, your design, and find those um, really, really easily. Okay, um, so that's why I use um, why I use those icons in there. And um, these are a 50 pixel size icon that fit really well with the heading two option um, in the Rich Text um, Content Editor. Okay. Um, I've provided some extra resources for you guys. If you've never written an essential question or you don't know what goes into an enduring understanding, um, I've got a, a couple of quick, easy resources here for you to look at those. Um, this uh, the second one is a little bit more um, comprehensive in terms of how to craft uh, an essential question and how to craft um, an enduring understanding. Um, all the way down here through the bottom, I've even got some examples for you and I've already got, got these pulled up. So I'm just going to jump right to that. So um, earlier in the school year, we read a book called The Alchemist. And so you can see, I always try to kick off my assignments with some type of image or a video just to kind of create some visual interest right off the bat, right? Like in something, and it's usually always tied to what the assignment is about or what we're learning con conceptually or, you know, just create in a visually interesting something to start off um, with your students. And then you can see here, I just, I kick it off with the essential question and then follow through here. This one is actually kind of short. You'll notice that like in my tutorial for you guys, it's pretty long, right? But there's a lot of information that I'm trying to get out to you guys. But on this assignment, you'll notice that it's not that super long. Um, short paragraphs here. Um, you know, I got, I, I've used the, obviously the essential question and enduring understanding. But I've got the description here, and the description is all about omens, and uh, this is something that is a, a, a big theme in The Alchemist. And then from there, it's like, here's what you're going to do, and some resources to go along with that. Um, you know, if students have never really thought about omens and what those mean, um, I've got some resources there for them so that they can look at omens and uh, kind of reference other things outside of the text, um, you know, that they're learning about. So um, I've got these examples for you to, to kind of check out and cruise through. And you'll note that I haven't used all the same things, you know, in terms of those different things. Um, you know, I've got an extended learning opportunity down in here uh, for this piece, um, Outliers, that we're reading. Um, and this, was a, this is a really cool thing because this is a really great example of how you can use extend learning opportunities. In the first chapter of Outliers, um, Malcolm Gladwell looks at birthday cutoff dates um, as, you know, kind of a, 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 a cumulative advantage to certain people. And um, he uses hockey players in professional hockey in Canada. And so I wanted to bring kind of something more, you know, home to our students. And so I, I found a, a similar type of study by somebody who did this with baseball. And so I brought this link in um, about uh, birthday cutoff dates in baseball and, and the impact that it has on professional players um, and, you know, the consequences of that down the road. So, you know, just a, just a really, you know, like I, I just love this format for a lot of different reasons. And, and I mean, I've, I've touched on the first one and that's the consistency piece. Um, and, and, uh, and, and more importantly, I think um, what's really great about um, this format is it creates a, a storytelling element to your, to your assignments, to your delivery. And that's what design is all about. As you are designing an assignment, you're designing your content you know, to be delivered to your students, design is all about telling that story. You want to engage your audience through storytelling. And I feel like this format it does that really, really nicely. 
um, by using the essential question, kind of drawing the students in with these like big questions or, you know, kind of really getting at the heart of what you're doing, why you're doing it. And then, you know, like it, it leads into, you know, like, here's why I think this is important and what you're going to take away at the end of this. Right. Um, and it, and it does it in a way that's not like, you know, this is, you know, standard 14.2 or outcome number 3.a, you know, or whatever it might be, right? It's very much more in the student language um, instead of teacher speak. And I think that part is really, really important is, is you know, leading students through uh, an engaging way that, um, that they can understand um, and then providing them with uh, resources if they need it and extended learning opportunities to take the assignment beyond that. So um, I hope this helps you in the, the next time you, you think about creating your, uh, your next assignment. I hope you try to try this format out. And I, I'll tell you this, one of the other reasons why I like this format is because every time I create a new assignment, it's easy for me. I don't get this blank page and go, where do I start? I know exactly where I need to start. I start off with that essential question and then I move on to the enduring understandings and I just go boom, boom, boom. And I start filling those things out, right? Um, professionally, it also makes me really think about like what is important that I am teaching, right? And, and in some ways, if I have to teach this lesson uh, synch uh, synchronously, you know, via Zoom or even in person, this kind of acts as a script for me. Um, you know, I can, I can run through these things and I have it available. And if students, if, if students miss my, like say class that day or miss the zoom or whatever it might be, um, it's laid out in such a way that it's easy for students to follow. And, you know, they get the kind of the preload of what you're doing in, in the assignment piece. Um, and then they get to the section of, okay, here's what I need to do. And then the follow up if they run into problems or if they want to go beyond, what you're giving them. So to me, it's, it's, it's a winner every time um, you do this and you will like the first time you do it, it might take you a little bit longer. You know, I'll tell you that, but um, as you do it more and more often, you'll just get better and better at it each and every time. And you'll be more efficient at it. And your assignments will be that more detailed and that much um, more engaging um, with your storytelling. So thanks again for tuning in and, uh, Happy canvassing out there, and uh, I'll see you next time.